The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're able to be with us today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our epistle reading appointed for today is from Ephesians chapter 4. This picks up where we left off last week, so Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at the 17th verse. St. Paul writes, This I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our devotion today, some catechetical thoughts. This part might remind you a little bit of uh, the small catechism, especially the way that it talks. It it doesn't just give you um, what not to do. It also gives you what to do in return. So we see kind of um, an inspiration for the way that Martin Luther would have written the small catechism. He didn't pluck these ideas directly out of the air. Uh, They were inspired by the way scripture speaks itself. So here we have St. Paul speaking in very catechetical language, very catechism-like language. Last week we talked about sin and Christ being bigger than our sin, um, that sin is like an enemy defeated and under his footstool. And we talked also about how we sometimes still fall into sin, that we uh, live in a world where temptations are still very real. St. Paul writes in another place a little bit about this, and I think we're gonna, we'll look at this, and then we'll springboard into some examples from the Catechism and see how they line up with what we have here in our scripture reading from Ephesians. St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 7, beginning at verse 15. For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, 
but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he adds, Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there is your answer, who will deliver him? In the midst of the struggle, though, here in Ephesians, he also gives us this pattern. Once we know what the commandments are, then we start to see how we succeed and fail in keeping them within our lives. So here we have these very catechism-like catechetical uh, phrases from St. Paul. And I'm going to read you a couple of the um, commandments and their um, meanings from Luther's small catechism. And then we're going to see how they kind of fit together. So from uh, Luther's small catechism, the eighth commandment, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. So here from St. Paul in Ephesians, St. Paul says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such is as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear it. So this is a way of talking where we see St. Paul talking about the way we speak. And when we say things that are corrupting, things that would, let's say if we're talking about an individual, something that would harm their reputation, here St. Paul says, no, don't speak in such a way that you would corrupt. Speak in such a way that you would build up. So thinking of the commandment and the meaning of the commandment, you know, defend your neighbor, speak well of him, explain everything in the kindest way, build them up, as fits the occasion, like St. Paul says, that it may give grace to those who hear it. Now just before this, in Ephesians, St. Paul says, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. So again, let's now look at the catechism and what Luther's small catechism says. You shall not steal. Answer, we should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. This is what that means what it means not to steal. So here you see that um, instead of stealing, let's say, instead of being a thief, work to help someone keep their, um, keep their possessions and their income. We can also just kind of jump over to the fifth commandment. Because there's a way in which the fifth commandment and the seventh commandment are kind of connected together. And we see it here in this passage from Ephesians. So the, the fifth commandment is, you shall not murder. What does this mean? And the answer is, we should fear and love God so we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Help and support him in every physical need sounds a lot like doing honest work so that we may have something to share with anyone in need. So if we're able to share with our neighbors, then we're also able to help and support them in every physical need. So it's very beautiful and interesting how, um, how catechetical this part of Ephesians is, how, how much like the catechism it is. And we shouldn't be surprised because the catechism is a good and right exposition of Scripture. So if you ever wonder, you know, like, what, what underpins the catechism? 
you can find scripture speaking the same way and that's why the catechism sounds the way it does so for our devotional um, times together even alone the catechism is a perfectly good thing to look at in terms of your devotional life now you may not have looked at it for many years but I would say that you could look at it every week and at different points in your life you're going to have additional thoughts or additional experiences that you can uh, bring to what you're reading in the catechism and what you're reading in scripture so that when you uh, think about these things and pray about them and study them um, there will be more and more to dig into more and more to think about uh, in terms of your life and your life with your neighbor and those around you so not just what not to do in terms of how to avoid sinning let's say but also in what you can do to help your neighbor so that you would all be able to we all together would be able to live in the peace of Christ another great little spot here in Ephesians is this spot that talks about be uh, angry but do not sin and then this next part do not let the sun go down on your anger do not let the sun go down on your anger now for those of you who are married um, your wife or your husband they're the closest person to you the closest neighbor you have and they are both the opportunity to do the most good and also the opportunity to do the most evil in your life you will sin against them and you will do good for them and we need to be able to forgive each other as we go through our lives together as married couples and often you'll hear this bit of advice that a couple shouldn't go to bed angry right that you should deal with whatever it is before you fall asleep so that it's not carried over to the next day so here we have Saint Paul hmm where does that advice come from here we have Saint Paul saying do not let the Sun go down on your anger today is the day if you have somebody that you are struggling with somebody you need to make amends with somebody you need to sort things out with somebody you need to repent to like to ask forgiveness of somebody that uh, you need to um, have love and kindness uh, be a part of your life instead of bitterness and acrimony if, if think about it like this today is the day we don't know if we have tomorrow but we know that we have today so the, these words from Saint Paul are very important do not let the Sun go down on your anger make amends think of opportunities in which you're able to forgive and be forgiven these are some devotional thoughts for you today you know centered on Ephesians chapter 4 let's gather together our tithes and offerings Heavenly Father we thank you for these gifts that now return to you we pray that by them more people would come to know Christ Jesus and have their faith and hope and trust in him in his name we pray amen let us pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all amen thank you for being with us today God bless you during your week Go in God's peace and in his joy. Thanks be to God.